Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to talk about Johnny Walker, who was coming off his most recent defeat against Jamal Hale, and it was a brutal one. I've never seen anyone go down like that in a fight, and I honestly hope he's okay. But man, what a fall from grace for someone who was once considered to be one of the most exciting prospects in MMA. Because before the UFC, he went 13-3, and and all of his fights ended by KO, TKO, or submission. His first decision was against Henrique Da Silva on Dana White's Contender Series, and although it wasn't a finish, Johnny dominated for the entire fight on the feet and on the ground. Plus he was a huge light heavyweight as he was tall and had a long reach. And alongside his fun and recognizable name, he also carried the personality to match with it. So if you knew who Johnny Walker was before he fought in the UFC, then you'd know that this guy was going to be exciting. And he proved that right away in his debut against Khalil Roundtree as Johnny made it look easy by connecting with some brutal shots before landing some elbows in the clinch that knocked out Khalil. And just like that, he got everyone's attention and that grew even more two and a half months later as he defeated Justin Ledette in 15 seconds with a spinning back fist and punches. At this point, Johnny was must watch MMA because he not only delivered in the cage, but he also delivered outside of it due to how likable he was. So after this win, he made a quick one month turnaround and stepped in as an injury replacement against Misha Serkinov. And despite the step up in competition, Johnny passed with flying colors as he connected with a flying knee and punches that finished the fight in 36 seconds. So with three straight first round finishes, the Johnny Walker hype train was in full force and it really seemed like he was going to become a UFC champion champion one day. Even with John Jones at the top of the 205 pound division, many people including Johnny himself thought that he had the tools to defeat him. And as crazy as that sounds now, this was believable because he was looking so good. But then he fought Corey Anderson and although Johnny was the favorite going into that fight, I feel like he underestimated Corey and this led to him getting caught by punches that forced the ref to step in and credit to the ref because it was a great stoppage. And just like that, the hype diminished big time but I could understand if it wasn't fully gone because fighters get caught all the time so maybe it was just a bad night for Johnny. After all, he did have some moments in his next fight against Nikita Krylov, but it still wasn't enough as Johnny got out wrestled for the most part and ended up losing by unanimous decision. And although he got back into the win column in his next fight against Ryan Spawn, it was not a clean performance as he ate some big shots that almost finished him. Then Johnny went on to fight Thiago Santos and although it was a competitive fight, Thiago was the one who came out with the unanimous decision victory. And now with Johnny losing his most recent fight in devastating fashion by the hands of Jamal Hill, he has gone on 1-4 and four in his last 5 and all of the hype that he built early on was gone. So what happened? Well I see a lot of people blaming his coach John Cavanaugh and although he has some responsibility for this, I don't think he's the main culprit. Personally I think Johnny himself is to blame because I feel like he let the hype get into his head during his initial rise. And there's no issue with a fighter being confident but once they start to overlook their opponents because of it, that's when it becomes dangerous for them. And that was perfectly displayed against Corey Anderson as Johnny and many others thought this was going to be a quick and easy finish for him. But with the fight not going as planned, I feel like it really took a toll on Johnny's mental game. Because we've seen dominant fighters lose fights before and for some of them, they continue to lose and I think a lot of that is due to the shock of being at such a high and then all of a sudden, it's over. I could only imagine how that could affect a fighter's mentality and overall confidence. Some take this humbling experience and grow from it while others continue to spiral downwards. And the latter is what happened to Johnny. And although I believe this all went down after his defeat to Corey Anderson, it may have even happened before it. After his win against Misha Serkinov, Johnny went to celebrate by flopping to the ground to do the worm and in the process, he dislocated his shoulder and because of this, he had to get surgery. And maybe I'm stretching here but I feel like this moment really changed him as a fighter. Who knows how serious this injury was and how it affected him physically afterwards. Maybe he wasn't comfortable with fighting the way he did before because of it. But I do feel like mentally, it made Johnny realize that he was human and that his body can get hurt whether it's from an opponent or from himself. So overall, I think Johnny's downfall is due to his mental game which has lowered his confidence in the cage big time. Plus he recently proposed to his girlfriend so maybe his mind is not as focused on fighting as it once was. But despite these setbacks I haven't lost complete hope in Johnny yet. Cause his situation is very similar to what Jan Bohovic went through as Jan went 1-4 in, in 5 fights at one point in the UFC. But of course he bounced back and ended up becoming the light heavyweight champion. And that's the benefit of these larger weight classes. Fighters are still a threat in their late 30s and in some cases in their early 40s. So at the age of 20, Johnny still has a lot of time to grow as a fighter and figure things out. Personally, I think he needs to work on his cardio and on his wrestling as he needs to come up with a game plan that doesn't always see him on the feet because it's clear that he's unable to take big shots. And I also think that he needs to train at other gyms because I don't see it working for him at SPG Ireland. Which is fine because not every gym is going to be the right fit. But like what Darren Till has been doing, Johnny needs to be more open to learning and growing from others. And if he does do this, I can see him getting back to being the fighter that everyone was excited about 
about in the first place. But what do you think? What's next for Johnny Walker? And do you see him making a comeback? But that's all I have for now, so I'll see you in my next one.